our Murani, the studies of the Good. sun, the stars, the reading of the waves, to sail to Hawaii, to Rapa Nui, Easter Island, to Aotearoa, New Zealand, and perhaps beyond. So it's appropriate that we here at our wonderful college, Aotea, <coughs> here in Porirua, which was named by Kupe, one of the greatest sailors of all. Porirua means the flowing of two tides, a reference to the two arms of Porirua Harbour. And of course, this whole electorate is called mana, and mana is about people of dignity, that have pride, that know their place in the world, that know where they come from. So we come from a wonderful area and a wonderful school that can claim one of the key leading navigators of this region and world. And so, and if you want to know why the tides rise and fall, you have to look not at the ocean, but up at the sky. Today, we are all part of celebrating this wonderful book called Astronomy Aotearoa. It's a textbook directed at three unit standards, which introduce our students to astronomy and hopefully to interest them in science. New Zealand's got to continue to produce the best scientists in the world, and no doubt a lot of them will come from Aotea College. I wanted to especially acknowledge our very own Robert Shaw and congratulate him on this wonderful book. I'd also like to thank him for his work in developing those unit standards, where he was also a member of the Distance Education Unit and a member of the Carter Observatory Board. <coughs> Science can be an intimidating subject to approach, but there are always ways to capture the interests of our young people, and I can see these budding scientists here. Most eight-year-olds I know have an encyclopedic knowledge of dinosaurs, and many chemistry teachers begin the year by showing off their most <coughs> spectacular experiments, knowing that students will want to find out more. But astronomy is one of those subjects that can also instill an interest in science through its myths, through its stories of exploration, through the legends, and through its accessibility to us all. After all, to see the stars, we only have to look up or among you lot. So this book will capture the interest and imagination of readers and hopefully inspire them to continue to study science. More young New Zealanders and young Māori and Pacifica New Zealanders, they're all Kiwis, need to consider a career in science in order for our country to compete and thrive in the global economy of the 21st century. We are small, but we've always already proven on a number of fronts that we can be leading lights in a number of fields and we still continue to do so. So I know that for many of you, and many of our people have graduated from Wananga's universities, Fitirea Polytechnic, they've also paved the way. The tertiary students from the sciences act as role models for young people <coughs> as well in some of the programs that we're running. And it is exciting to see their imagination and enthusiasm for science. But before I launch this book, I want to ask Lewis Moyo to share a message from my brother minister, the Minister of Māori Affairs who couldn't be here because they've got cabinet on, uh, to share a little message for you. And thank you so much. It's just such a pleasure, Robert, to come and launch this book, Amaru, and to all of you this morning. So, Lewis? Kia ora, thank you. Um, Kia ora. Thank you, Minister. E te rangatira, tipene, ngā karakia tapito, i runga i ngā whāronga tapito, ka mihia te kia koe. Ka mihia no kia koe mo ngā mihi kia rata mato mene ki te kōo. Just acknowledging, uh, I'm sorry I know Ms. Tipene because we both come from the same coast. <laughs> <coughs> For his uh, traditional prayer on this traditional knowledge book and for acknowledging those that our people that pass on and whom we always call upon for their spirits to be with us. My name is Lewis Moyo. I, I, 
I'm an employee in the Minister Bonomir's office. And a uh, humble pleasure to be here, Julia. Thank you. Uh, Your Worship and other distinguished guests. I suggested to Lua uh, Manavao, Winnie Laban, that I wouldn't speak, but she said, uh, you'll have a speech from Minister Horami, and I think you should read some parts of it. So I've just highlighted some parts that I have. It's a bit humble being here. Can I also acknowledge uh, the tamahini that are here and, and uh, the people that uh, Minister Laban described as our future scientists, uh, uh, you students. Sure. Now these are in the words of Minister Horomi. The government is seeking to create a knowledge-based economy which is innovative and creative and provides a unique quality of life for all New Zealanders. We can't do this without science. In the knowledge society of the 21st century, science and technology will be vital to our success as a nation. And he goes on to say, through astronomy, students can learn about space exploration, learn about our solar system, and learn about the galaxies and beyond. Once again, the minister says he wants to acknowledge Richard Bentley, uh, the current chairperson of the Centre Observatory, and congratulations. This is a distinctly New Zealand book written for New Zealand students. It celebrates the achievement of New Zealand scientists in the early Maori and Pacific Island achievements regarding astronomy, and particularly navigation. The Māori section was written by Anna Uridi, who is much involved in Māori voyaging revival. He is also a relative of the ministers. Mr. Uridi is also kindly, Mr. Tilly is also a relative of mine. <laughs> Mr. Uridi also kindly provided artwork for this part of the book, though I could have provided him with a photo of myself in a waka if he had only asked. <laughs> I believe he tipped out on those waka out of the Middle East. Some of you may know that Matariki has become a national significant event on New Zealand's calendar, not just for Māori, but for all New Zealanders. And this book explains what Matariki is and why it is important. Visually, it is a striking book, and I'd like to offer my congratulations to all of those who contributed to it, and in particular the author, Robert Shaw, for, talk, for talking directly to our students and bringing to the subject such a sweep of history and cultures. And I'll read this last bit, Minister, and I'd now like to pass the baton back to Winnie Laban, who's going to formally launch this book. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Robert, why don't you come up here? I'm embarrassing, aren't you? We're all a team. Is it that heavy? <laughs> <laughs> it is my pleasure, indeed. Uh, to launch this fabulous book, Astronomy Aotearoa, a gift from our ancestors to you, our children, who will be the future leaders of astronomy sciences, not only in this country and our region, but the world. Thank you very much. <laughs> Um, and the 
named Thomas Long the big brother. <coughs> Headers is addressed because it has numbers on the streets in those days. Headers is addressed the local pub, which was the ship that he was publishing in this little road near the sign of the ship. And all their books ever since have had a wee ship on them. So if you see a book with a little ship, see this here, floating along, that is a sign that it's Thomas Ancient Publishing Company. And I don't think that if you're going to launch a book, you can have a better symbol. Our books are, in effect, little freighters or little walker full of knowledge that we're sending out and hoping that they're going to lodge somewhere out there in the world of people's minds. Um, we're not too far away because this branch of the co company has to produce books for New Zealand. We can't produce books for Australia because there's another branch of the company over there doing it and they don't want our stuff because they don't get any credit for, for those books. They only get credit for the ones they do. So we have to publish books for New Zealand and for New Zealand students, which means they're all written by New Zealand authors. Teachers who are familiar with <coughs> the assessment and the curriculum is what's required here in New Zealand. People like Robert, who, um, who are teaching, who are engaged in many cases on their own lifelong learning path by doing PhDs or extra diplomas in their spare time. They have 50 or 60 hours of, um, of work, including marking and stuff they take home during the weekends. They're involved in community things. Extracurricular activities. I don't know how they find time to write books. They're, they're a credit to our country, and um, I think uh, we're blessed to have people like Robert who are able to find the time to produce these resources for you and for us to, um, you know, to grow and become more skilled and knowledgeable. Two things about this book I'd like to say. One is that astronomers discovered the internet before anybody else did. They, they were among the first people to use it. So by the time the rest of us got onto the internet, it was chock up with astronomical data. There are big telescope facilities around the world. There's one in Japan called the Subaru Telescope Facility, which was called Nakariki, of course. They put 20 terabytes of information onto the internet every year. That's 20 million megabytes. And um, around the world, people like Nansen are also putting on petabytes of stuff. So this book is based on the idea, and the unit standard that it's written for, based on the idea that Ethan's are going to be going up there as internet astronomers, virtual astronomers, and you could be discovering stuff that nobody knows about because the data's there waiting to be filtered and analyzed. You could be doing that when you go home today or on the, on the uh, computers here. You could be virtual astronomers, and there's a, a website that we produce, that was produced for free, called the Astronomy Out uh, Net. Net. Which, uh, which you can go and look at straight away. And there'll be a workbook to guide you through the use of the internet as well. Um, and our hope is that, as well as doing the mess books and the reading schemes and all those other things that we've produced over the years, that, that the science and technology that we publish will help you become competitive and, uh, and uh, high end uh, citizens of the 21st century. Okay, so thanks again to those who spoke before. Thank you, Robert, for producing the book. And, um, and um, I hope you'll enjoy uh, using the media. Thanks. Thanks, Ken. Not too free to know it to not way. I know it to not way. Not to not to not way. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, I don't know what there is left to say, actually, after all those words, uh, which were very kind and kind of took my breath away a little bit. Uh, I want to acknowledge the uh, presence of Mayor Jenny here, who represents the city, of course. Um, so thank you for, for coming, Jenny. It's, it's very good of you. And of course, uh, Winnie, apart from being a, a minister, if I can call her that, she should be the Honourable Winnie, so strictly speaking, uh, of course, is our local member of parliament. And so we, we're fortunate, in fact, to be able to make that link as well. Uh, and that, that is that's excellent. Uh, the reality is that the, the, the book started really in a project in the Carter Observatory uh, because the Carter Observatory was kind of doing one of those strategic planning things that organisations do and they said, well, what does astronomy need and what does New Zealand need? 
and, and the answer came up, we want to see astronomy right in the middle of the secondary school. We want to see it being used by youngsters as a way of getting them interested in science, and getting them interested in technology, and hopefully going on and making careers in those areas. And that's not just because it's great fun for the students, but that's also because it's something that the country actually needs. Uh, we have to do this. We don't have much choice, actually. If you, if you look at what's happening around the whole world, in the place of New Zealand in it, you can see that, in fact, that's what we've got to do. And so this book is, in fact, at the heart of that particular thing. And, of course, that bright idea came within the Carter Observatory, and it was the board of the Carter Observatory, and Richard Bentley, mm -hmm. who's sitting there now, represents them. He's their present chairperson. Uh, and, in fact, that board was prepared to back, first of all, the whole business of putting curriculum into the, into the secondary schools, and that had to be done through establishing unit standards, and then later on, the actual trying to getting this thing taught, uh, both on the internet, but also, of course, it's going to be taught through the book. So that whole project comes together as one, one significant project. Uh, one of the wonderful things about working within Porirua City uh, is the enormous resource of people that we have got here. And I didn't have to go too far to find somebody who was an enthusiast on, on, on the Maori side of astronomy and, and, and sailing, of course, the Waka sailing. Uh, and there was, there was uh, Anuru Reedy just sitting up there in, in, in the Wānana, kind of all ready, to start, <laughs> all, all, ready, all ready to start writing. In fact, the only thing about his writing was <laughs> that you had to catch him when he was actually there because quite often he was on the ocean sailing and I discovered that you're <laughs> often away. Uh, and so we we're delighted to actually to be able to bring in that side and then the Pacifica side yeah. came together very well. Uh, supported by a, an exhibition that you might have noticed that was in the Auckland War Memorial Museum up in Auckland, where in fact there has been an enormous amount of work done to bring together uh, the, these traditions of the Pacific. And it's only now that we're starting to cotton on to the enormous extent of what actually happened there. And if you compare Waka sailing uh, in, in the North Pacific and compare it with the last thing here in the South Pacific. It was a really interesting study uh, that you could actually do. And in fact, students could, could do that because that information could be brought off the internet. There's a, a, Pacific, a North Pacific a Sailing Association, which is tips colleagues, uh, but it's all there that you could bring that together. So there's all sorts of things you could do. Uh, when you produce a book these days, you've got to actually produce three, three things. You've got to produce the basic textbook, as it were, but you've also got to produce the student workbook and you've also got to produce the website resources and you've got to keep the website resources going. So the whole thing's actually a package uh, with the students in mind and I'll let you into a little secret about science teachers. The best way to give science teachers a book is to tell them all you've got to do is give it to the students and you just stand back and let them do it. Science teachers love that and I know that because I used to be a science teacher. So that's the sort of book that we've tried to, tried to produce. So... I want to acknowledge the, uh, the publishers, Pearson Education New Zealand, uh, because they're taking a bit of a risk. If you're a publisher of a book, you actually like to look at the books that have large numbers of students in the courses. Now in this case, this is new and emerging business. This is actually not, in New Zealand terms, an, an, a new, an enormous subject. And what we're planning to do is to try and promote it, to make it an enormous subject and of course, Pearsons have had to be prepared to take the risk uh, that is associated with that. So thank you, Ken, for stepping out a little bit out of the 